Okay, we're back. And the goal now is to try to understand the Selmer group as something that we can actually compute with. This would be no good if we couldn't actually get our hands on something that we can compute elements of the Selmer group. And that's the beauty of it, that you can do this very explicit. So first of all, let me define a few things. So what's going to happen is that um, we are going to identify uh, H1 GKE as something we can compute with. Okay, so um, we're going to build up to it. First, we're going to identify what is H1 GK of isomorphisms of E, and then embed H1 GKE into the isomorphisms of E in the cohomology of that, and then they are compute with it. Okay, so first of all, we have to define uh, what are twists. So a twist, of a curve is a smooth curve uh, so here c over k is uh, assumed to be a smooth uh, projective curve so a twist is another a smooth curve uh, c prime k c prime over k isomorphic to C over K bar, okay? And uh, the set of all twists uh, we denote by twist of uh, C over K, okay? So for example, um, for example, we have um, that if we have an elliptic curve over Q, say, and this is given by y square equals f of x, y square equals f of x, uh, then I can uh, find a twist, C prime, which is uh, dy square equals f of x. So if d is a square free, then dy square equals f of x is a twist because it's isomorphic uh, to E over Q adjoined the square root of D. It's not over Q, but they are isomorphic over Q adjoined the square root of D. So it is a twist of E. Okay. Um, now notice that, so it turns out that um, let me state this now as a theorem. I'm not going to, um, I don't have time to uh, prove all these theorems about twisting and homogeneous spaces, unfortunately. But uh, the key is that the space, the set of all twists of a curve, it turns out to be in bijective correspondence with H1 of uh, GK isomorphisms of C. So isomorphisms and all the possible isomorphisms from C to C over K, it turns out that these two are in bijection. Uh, let me show you how this bijection works. So, uh, and I'm not gonna prove that this is a bijection, but here is how it works. If I have an elliptic, uh, if I have a twist, so if C, is isomorphic to uh, C prime, then there's gotta be, if C prime is a twist, there is gotta be an isomorphism to C, okay? Uh, the isomorphism may de be defined over K bar itself, okay? So uh, the isomorphism itself is over K bar, but the curve C and C prime are over K. Then, I can map this and what I need is a, um, I need a co-cycle. So how do you define the co-cycle? The co-cycle attached to this isomorphism goes from here to isomorphisms of C as follows. Sigma goes to uh, sigma acting on phi uh, composed with phi inverse. So what is happening there is that 
I'm first going through, I'm starting from C, pick a point on C, through phi inverse, it goes to C prime. Then I let, I let Galois act on it in C prime, and then I send it back to, uh, to C, okay? So you see how that is sort of a twist on the point that send it to C prime, twist it there with Galois, and send it back and see what you get. Okay, so this, it turns out to be a co-cycle, and this gives you a map, and it turns out you can go the other way. So now the other way is the following. If I have a co-cycle, now I need to pull out of my sleeve a new curve that is isomorphic to C. How do you remember? through the whole course, how do we compute new curves out of nothing? Uh, we used a very powerful, powerful theorem, which is that a function field of transcendence degree one is a curve. So what we're going to do is take the function field of your curve C, twist it with the, uh, with the uh, co-cycle, and that new twist of the function field is gonna give me a new function field of degree one, transcendent degree one, and that is a curve. And that curve turns out to be a twist of your elliptic curve, okay? So um, here's what happens. Let me show you how it works. So, um, so the curve C is given by, uh, so you take, the function field of your curve C, and it's a twisted version by that co-cycle, such that it is exactly the same function field, but now the action of Galois is different. Now the action of Galois on a function is by definition, F of Xi Sigma. Okay, so a function used to work a function takes p to f of p. So now what it does is take p, first use sigma to, to twist it, use the isomorphism of c to send p to something else using sigma, and then use f on that, okay? Um, so it does that, and it on constants is just uh, sigma of k on, uh, on constants. Okay, so this turns out to be a new function field. So this is the function field of a curve. So you have to prove that it's transcendence degree one field, but it is the function field of, uh, of K C prime, and it turns out that C prime is isomorphic to C over K bar. So that is the new twist. Okay, that you get from a co-cycle. So for example, um, for example, um, what happens, um, let me give you an example uh, that I have an elliptic curve If I have an elliptic curve over K, um, what I want to tell you is if I give you a, a, a co-cycle, how do I find out what is the twist of that uh, with that co-cycle? And if I have a quadratic extension, a non-trivial quadratic extension of my number field, then that comes with a quadratic character Uh, as I said it to to this, it's what it does is uh, chi of sigma is sigma square root of d over a square root of d, and you see that that's going to be either plus or minus one, okay? And um, you can define a cycle out of this.
xi that's going to the isomorphisms of E such that sigma is mapped to multiplication by chi of sigma. Okay, so this is multiplication by one or multiplication by minus one. Okay, uh, so what is the corresponding uh, twist? Well, uh, what you want to find out is what is a curve C that has or function field, the function field on E, but the twisted version. Now, since uh, multiplication by minus one on a point gives you X minus Y. So what this does is that if Sigma is a Galois element, the way it acts on this new function field is the following, uh, a square root of D, is going to chi the square root of d x the function x acting on uh when sigma acts on it you see that uh the action is trivial on x nothing changes on x so what you get is just x but the function y it depends on what sigma does that it will either go to y or minus y according to what happens with chi, okay? So what I need to find is uh, functions in this new function field that are actually invariant by uh, the action. So it turns out that the functions x prime, which is just x, x is invariant under sigma, so that works. Uh, the function y prime, which is y over the square root of d is invariant. So these two are in my new function field twisted, and uh, they are fixed by the action of Galois. Okay, um, but therefore uh, these two functions are functions of the new function field, and they are defined over k. So uh, if you look at how are these related, the relation between the two is that. Uh, dy prime squared is f of x prime. Okay, where uh, we had before that the x and the y are satisfied, uh, satisfy y squared equal f of x, then this is the new equation for my twist. Um, so the isomorphic curve that we saw before is actually the twist that you get through these co cycle. Okay. So this is the the twisted uh, the twisted uh, curve that corresponds to uh, this co cycle. Very good. So now, um, so we have what we have now is this. So here we go. So I have um, H one. GK isomorphisms of E that is isomorphic or well, not isomorphic. There is no structure on the twists. This is in bijection with the twists of E over K. But what I actually want is uh, H1 of GK E. Now, these are in here because for every point uh, in P, I can send it to, so E, there is a map to isomorphisms of E that comes from uh, send P to translation by P. The isomorphism that goes from E to E and then sends Q to uh, P plus Q, translation by P. So um, we do have that H1 GKE is inside this, which we know are twists. So we have to now identify what is this? What is this piece? So there's gotta be something else happening in there for those. And what happens is that those are called homogeneous spaces. 
So here is the definition of homogeneous space is going to be the twist that have one extra property. So uh, principle homogeneous the space for E over K is a smooth curve C over K uh, together with uh, simply transitive algebraic group action of E on C defined over K. Okay, so they are pairs C and mu uh, such that uh, mu is an action like this. Okay, with a morphism with several properties that I'm not going to listen here. Uh, sometimes uh, we denote uh, sometimes mu of uh, p naught and p. Uh, sometimes we denote it as uh, simply p naught plus p as an addition. Although there is no addition there, it's just that would. Um, uh, so that is just notation. Now it turns out that uh, for all p, q, and c, um, there there is a unique r in E such that um, mu of p r is q, and we write um, we write that as um, a, a subtraction sometimes. Okay, so we will write. Um, so we write we write uh, p minus r is q, um, and again this is just notation. So just to just to understand that. All right. So what is it about twists about these homogeneous spaces that we want? What we want is to, uh, understand how those are related to. Um, to uh, cohomology classes. Uh, so there is one more thing we need here is that there is a, uh, a relation between homogeneous spaces to homogeneous spaces C and C prime uh, for E are equivalent if uh, there is uh, an isomorphism, uh, an isomorphism compatible with the action, with the action on E. So uh, what that means is that theta of uh, P plus P, so this is addition with the mu, is uh, theta of P plus again addition with the mu prime of p okay and then equivalence uh, uh, the equivalence um, the equivalence classes is called the ve chatelet group which is called the uh, the Chatelet group of E over K. This is uh, homogeneous spaces for E uh, modulo the equivalence that we just defined. And the theorem uh, that I'm again not proving here is that precisely the homogeneous spaces of those twists that come with uh, that action uh, are the ones that we want. So um so there is a natural bijection from the Ve Chatelet group or the Ve Chatelet to H1 of GKE uh, that goes as follows if you have a class 
in here, this is mapped to the class, uh, the, uh, the code cycle that sends uh, sigma to uh, with a point p naught to p naught sigma minus p naught. And again, uh, what this means is uh, the addition that comes from sigma, this is, there is no addition on, on the twist C itself, but that is that map uh, mu, but that gives you a co-cycle. And in the other direction is the direction uh, that we had before, that if you have a co-cycle, then you get a twist. Okay, that comes from uh, just twisting your function field by by xi, by xi. Okay. So let me um, uh, let me try to to do this um, for uh, a case of interest. So what we want to now is identify what happens when you have a, a two isogeny, for example. Okay, and uh, and see what happens. So. Um, let me start a new page here. So here is a very important example, which is going to let us identify those cohomology classes in a very particular case. As actually, these homogeneous spaces give equation of the homogeneous spaces. Oh, oh, oh! Something very important here that I do need is the following, um, which is. Um, the following proposition. Um, so, if you have a uh, homogeneous, let A be a homogeneous space uh, for E, then C over K is in the trivial class. of the uh, Ve Chatelet group, even only if there are no points uh, or on, on the contrary, if, if there are points. Okay, if there are rational points, then it has to be in the trivial class. This is going to uh, be important in that we're going to be looking at things that are in the trivial class in H one G nu of E, okay. So remember that things in the uh, Selmer group go th to things that are trivial. They go to zero in the product over local uh, classes. Okay. So um, and let's go back to an example here, which is uh, the example of uh, let take let's take E to be an elliptic curve. And uh, we have a quadratic extension. And um, suppose that we have uh, just one point on E over K um, be a non trivial uh, two torsion point. Okay. We are not assuming that we have all the two torsion defined over K, that we have one two torsion point defined over K. Then I can come up with, uh, I can come up with a map from GK to E that sends Sigma to O if uh, Sigma of the square root of D is the square root of D or T if uh, sigma square root of d is minus the square root of d, and it turns out that this is a co is a one co cycle, okay, and uh, we can extend that to be a map to isomorphisms of E uh, that sends uh, sigma to well either uh, uh, either translation by O or translation by T. 
it just add t okay so this is the one that sends every p to p and this sends p to t plus p so that is uh, another cocycle cycle that comes from just having one two torsion point so now uh, we know that h1 gk isomorphisms of e are in bijections with twists of e so uh, we want to know also like what is the homogeneous space that corresponds to this co-cycle so uh, we can give an equation for e e has a two torsion point so might as well assume that is the zero zero so it will be an equation of this form with t being zero zero okay and translation by t on a point p would add x y and the point zero zero and that gives you uh, if you compute that map is this map okay so uh what we need is the compute the action of Galois on this function field. So the action of Galois on the new function field, which is twisted, okay, will be defined by uh, sigma of the square root of d is minus the square root of d. Uh, sigma acting on x will send it to b over x. And sigma acting on y will send it to minus b y over x squared. Great. So now what I need is to find a field, the subfield fixed by sigma, or in other words, find functions that are actually fixed by uh, this action of Galois. And it turns out that the functions the square root of d over x over y, you stare at this long enough, and the function of square root of d x minus b over x are fixed. By Galois, and if you look at what they satisfy, they satisfy the following equation. C is uh, dw squared equals d squared minus 2ad z squared uh, plus a squared minus 4b z to the fourth okay All right so that is the uh, homogeneous space that actually corresponds to that action to that uh to that um uh, co-cycle Okay, and I have maps. Uh, I have maps uh, phi uh, from E to C. So there is an an isomorphism from E to C that goes like that, um, and then there is also its inverse. Okay, and um, okay, so it is a homogeneous space. You can actually define the mu, but um, it, the mu at the end it doesn't quite. Um, tell you anything else all right but now then um now we're going to put together what we know about um about selmer together with this so uh let me um i think i need to add pages Okay, so um, now that we know, uh, so remember that we had that um, um, the Selmer group was classes 
in the cohomology classes, but classes are ramified outside a set S. So continuing with that example that we just uh, discussed, uh, so suppose that we have, uh, we're going to use, uh, we have an elliptic curve E <clears throat> uh, with a two torsion point uh, T, Uh, the two torsion point gives us an isogeny phi from E to E prime, whose uh, kernel is precisely uh, given by T, okay? This E prime is uh, just um, E mod, uh, that subgroup of order two. Very good. So uh, we are taking uh, T to be zero, zero for convenience, and the elliptic curve is given by uh, Y square equals X cubed plus AX square plus BX. So it has a point over there two at zero, zero. Now let S be in MK as usual, okay? And then we identify, um, E phi, which is a subgroup for the two, just identify it with new two as GK modules. Then we know from Hilbert's 90 that H1 of GK E phi, which is remember one of the pieces in the in the first short exact sequence we deduce out of the long exact sequence. This from Hilbert's 90 is K cross modulo k cross two, okay? Um, and uh, so that is by Helbert's 90. And, uh, but we know that the Selmer groups are inside cohomology classes that are unramified outside S. But we know then what, uh, what classes will be unramified outside S of these will be precisely KS2. It will be classes modulo squares such that the order of vanishing at B is zero modulo two for all new not in S, which is hopefully familiar. And uh, moreover, if D is one of those classes, then I want to compute what is the homogeneous space corresponding to this. Uh, this is the co-cycle uh, that is given by sigma goes to O or T according to whether um, sigma acts trivially or non-trivially on a square root of D. Okay, um, but then for that, I know I have just computed the homogeneous space. Is this space to some quartic? Okay, and I can actually also compute the isogeny. I know where E prime goes, E prime goes to uh, y square equals x cubed minus 2a x square plus a square minus 4bx. All right. Uh, the isogeny, by the way, it is also given. Uh, so I can compute the equation of the isogeny and, uh, and I have a map that goes from, um, so I have an additional map that goes from CD to E, uh, which I will write in a second. And uh, moreover, I have uh, the connecting home that goes from E prime K to cohomology classes is uh, with K cross modulo K cross squared. It goes as follows, it has the delta of O is one, delta of zero, zero of T, that goes to A of square minus four B and delta of X, Y 
uh, goes to x if x is not o uh, is not o or zero. Okay, so um, all in all, what we get is the following uh, proposition, which is uh, called uh, Dysenbia to isogeny. And it says the following uh, that we have a map. If I have a two isogeny that goes from here to E prime, y squared equals x cubed minus 2a x squared plus a squared minus 4b, x that sends xy to um, y squared over x squared, y b minus x squared over x squared, uh, we let e phi be uh, o and 0, 0, and let s be as always mk infinity union uh, primes dividing uh, 2b a squared minus 4b. That encompasses bad primes and prime dividing 2. Then there is an exact sequence 0 to e prime of phi of e k 2 uh, through delta through k is 2, which is going to be uh, a stand in for the uh, ve for the summer group. such that O goes to one, zero, zero goes to A squared minus four B and uh, X, Y goes to X. And the map here, Delta is sent to uh, the class of CD where CD is like before, DW square equals D square minus two AD z is squared plus a is squared minus 4b z to the fourth. And uh, moreover, the Selma group of E is precisely those classes in KS2 such that, um, well, remember, they have to be those that are trivial everywhere, but trivial means uh, there are points. So uh, trivial everywhere locally in the and the in cohomology means that there are points locally everywhere so these are homogeneous spaces that are locally solvable everywhere while uh, those that are locally solvable everywhere but they do not have global points those will correspond to parts of Shaw and finally, uh, there is a map uh, back from the homogeneous space. If you find a point in the homogeneous space, there's a map, map back to E that sends the point to D over Z squared comma minus D W Z cubed. And uh, such that, if P is in CDK, then uh, delta psi of P is congruent to D modulo K cross squared. Okay, so it, it does come from uh, the value D in KSD. All right, so, um, and similarly, there is the equivalent um, this whole equivalent construction for the reversal when you do phi hat instead of phi. And that between this one and the other one, you can do a computation to compute a model Bay group. I will stop here just to let people just go because it's long enough. Um, but I will actually come back and do one more video with one example of a descent, descent via two isogeny. So I will stop here for now.